Hello and welcome to episode 30 of the Unsportsman podcast. I'm, I'm Aaron Callahan, uh, joined today by Tom. How are you, Tom? Great, thanks, Aaron. How's yourself, mate? Not too bad. Tom, you know, they say if you get to episode 30 of your podcast, you're, you're right. <laughs> you're, uh, you're in the groove and you're, you're well on your way. Well, there's evidence against that now for us. So. <laughs> <laughs> Put uh, that in the B column and we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 30, milestone for the unsportsman. A uh, bit of a special one today. I'll, I'll let Tom introduce it. A uh, bit of housekeeping. Uh, if you want to help us out, go to iTunes, leave a five-star review. What do we say, Tom? Five-star reviews help us out. Five stars only. Five, five star, stars only. Five, five stars only. <laughs> All right, no and, one stars like that with that one guy that we're still tracking down. <laughs> we will find you. We've contacted Cambridge Analytica and he is on the case. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Tom, do you want to introduce uh, what today's podcast is all about? Yeah, so uh, thanks, Azza. We I recorded this one yesterday uh, uh, with a very special guest. We're talking some boxing news, Australian sweet science royalty. Um, Bob Mirovic joined joined me for a chat yesterday. Uh, he's uh, if anyone doesn't know Bob, he's a three time Australian champion, Australian heavyweight champion. Um, he shared the ring with the likes of Franz Botha, um, Nikolai Valuev, if you remember that science experiment from Russia, jo- uh, Joe Bugner, John Hopawati, um, yeah, and many many more as well. Colin Kidd, Cole Miner Wilson. He was born in Croatia. Now he lives on the Central Coast. Um, and he was a former sparring partner for Mike Tyson, which uh, he, t- he tells us about that experience in this interview. It is a great interview. We asked Bob about a few things going on in the boxing world. Unfortunately, we had some audio problems at the start of the uh, clip, and it cuts in just around about the time where Bob is explaining that he now runs a gym on the Central Coast in conjunction with a few other folks. So, yeah, it's a great interview, and um, here it is. Lose some weight, so forth. Um, I do some other training too at, at um, Mark Ruggiero's boxing gym. Very nice. Um, who fought Mundine? Yeah, who, who's a four, five-time Australian champion. Nice. He fought Mundine and um, Shan Taylor and, and other big fighters. So he's got a, a big uh, gym there on a big property on acreage out there at uh, Central Coast. We do other stuff there too. Yeah. Nice one, mate. Nice one. Um, mate, we'll dive straight into a bit of boxing news. I just wanted to get your opinion yeah. on some things. Uh, yeah. We'll start with the big boys and the heavyweights. Um, yeah. Did you see the fights between Ortiz and Wilder and uh, Joshua and Parker over the last few months? Yes, I did. Yeah. What did you make of those two fights? Um, Ortiz and Wilder, that was a fight that I was really looking forward to seeing how it would shape out because um, I've never seen Ortiz fight previously, but I read so much about him and he was quite... Uh, respect the fighter with um, great talent, great skills, yep. and um, also power too. But there on Deontay Wilder, the other guy um, from America, like he's just known to be throws posts with sledgehammers, you know what I mean? So, yeah, um, yeah. And, and the way the fight went, it was quite interesting. It showed Deontay Wilder that he uh, dealt with the pressure and the boxing ability of uh, Ortiz, and Ortiz actually hurt him. A couple of yep. times, and Wilder came back to stop him, which was, which was, you know, I spoke, so I spoke to many, many boxing people about it, and they were all shocked to see that. So um, that was a big, big win for Wilder, huge win. Yeah, and and given that, do you think now that uh, uh, Wilder, the path is clear for Wilder and Joshua to go ahead, or do you still think we're twelve to eighteen months off that fight? Yeah, like I mean, there's so much banter going on between Wilder and and Joshua. Um, over this, you know, I, yep. I watched yesterday interview yesterday with uh, Joshua, and he said that um, that his promoter like uh, Hearn had uh, offered him a decent payday, which 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 I'm not sure what the exact figures were, but um, he said he never heard back from Wilder, and Wilder like I, I know this fight's a big fight, it's a big fight, and um, you know like. I think they were wording around about five or seven million dollars for Waller, which yep. is just it's bloody just, good money, you know. It is, it is. That's not a bad payday. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the thing, the fight is, the fight will be huge. Like you know, 
it, it'll sell out Wembley to hold it there or whatever, and it'll be massive um, pay per view. You know, mm. like um, mm. I suppose like I mean, the thing is, I mean, Joshua's in the in, in the driver's seat; he's got the titles, yeah. but Wilder has the other other part that Josh hasn't got. So, and WBC's title sort of it's sort of recognised in a way as the main title. Yep. Some fighters and some fight fans, but then again, I'm not sure. Like, um, you know, like I mean, Josh has proven to the boxing world that he's the man. Like he's making big headlines. He's mm. undefeated. Um, he's, he's he's selling out every every um study he pulls. And um, like I said in an interview before, that um Hearn went over to America and asked. Public, which could have been a bit of a setup, he says, "Do you know Deontay Wilder?" And he's um, asked about four or five different people, and these people never. They said, "We don't know who he is," you know. Yeah, yeah. So, but the pu- the public profile of Joshua seems to be a bit bigger at the moment. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. Yeah. So, where do you see uh, someone like Tyson Fury in this situation? Well, I mean, Tyson Fury, like it all comes down. Like I, 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 I um. I talked about it on my page, on the Aussie Boxing page, and mm-hmm. I said, "Look, um, this is a big, big ask for for, um, uh, for for Fury. Like he's left from his last fight, being the world heavyweight champion, unified champion, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden has a fought for two years or so. Mm-hmm. Um, and the pressure of that having a couple of years off with expectations of him to perform well." Is no, is another problem with him. So, um, I don't yeah. know. I mean, shit. It's, uh, it's um. I like so to you, see who the opponent's going to be. Yeah. Do you think so? You don't think our Fury will get a shot at Joshua straight away? You think the the Wilder happen, the fight is more likely to happen first? Yeah. Well, personally, I I, I don't believe that Fury is ready to fight Joshua. Not yeah. yet. You know, he hasn't fought for two years. He needs. He needs. A good fight or two fights, even three fights. Um, I heard rumours that they're talking about having three fights, and and um, he's planning on fighting Joshua in his fourth fight. Sure, yeah. So, but um, it'll be a watch this space kind of a thing. Eh? At least there's some uh, movement happening amongst the heavyweights once more. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Look, it's big right now. It's big news right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big news. Um. But, Mate, I'll just get you on to um, some um, some middleweight news, and I just want to get your opinion on this because there's a lot of rumours about this as well. With uh, yeah. um, uh, Obviously, Canelo Alvarez has failed his drug test and has yep. subsequently been banned for that drug drug test. Yep. Um, yeah, there's just rumours of plenty with this one. Um, the, some people have said it's a false flag um, to delay the fight. I'm not sure how true that is. Um, some people just say he's been genuinely been caught for doping. Um, and then obviously the, the message that he's putting out is that it's due to meat contamination? Um, where do you stand on this one? This gets a, a bit of a bit of news, but yeah. there's a lot surrounding this. Um, from from what I heard, it, it, they are two reports, and that he has been uh, found to have the substance in his body. Um, the fight's off, um, like I said, and and I, I think I'm still I'm not sure whether they've given given him a, a ban yet uh, mm. from the boxing commission. Um, I'm not sure whether. You know, they're talking about probably a six-month ban. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I think that I think they ended up banning him the other the other day. I think it was three months or six months, but I can't. It was a nominal yeah, figure, yeah. some something. Yeah, it's um. I yeah, know it's a it's a very difficult situation to talk about. Like I'm not, I'm not sure with all the details, but the thing is, like I was looking forward to it so much for that rematch because uh, I believe, like I'm a I'm a, I'm a um, Golovkin fan, and then I yep. like the way he fights, and um, and I believe you. I believe he won the fight, the first fight. It was a close fight, yes. Yeah, but I believe you won the fight. Well, that that was the the other thing I was just going to ask you was that uh, I I um, myself am a Golovkin fan as well, but um, I thought that the judging was a bit off there, and I thought he he did enough to win that fight, as you said, a yeah. close fight. But uh, that's that, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, like I mean, everyone knows with with that um. That lady, um, that bird lady. Well, I mean, to get yep. the score she gave, that was just like, like that. That, that in itself should say 
that she should never ever be allowed to judge a boxing match again because that was just ridiculous. It was, yeah, yeah but- 118, 110, I think she scored it. That was out of this yeah. world. Don't yeah. think anyone had it that. Unbelievable. Who steps in to fight Golovkin now, do you think, for this, for, for um, you know? Yeah, I think they mentioned um, a guy from um, Britain. Uh, I'm not sure who it was. They had Billy Joe Saunders was up there, but they also had Gary O'Sullivan, who was uh, an Irish fighter, but he's ranked below Mundine in, in the middleweight rankings, so I'm not yeah. sure if that was just sort of a, a tune-up bout for him. Yeah. But um, uh, yes, yeah, I, I think Billy Joe Saunders was con- was or Daniel Jacobs who who uh, Golovkin fought previously yeah. and won a decision against. But um, is there anyone that sort of stands out to you as a middleweight contender that you'd like to see fight? Uh, um, <laughs> there was <laughs> there was even rumours of um, Mayweather. <laughs> oh right, yeah. There was even rumours going around that Mayweather might fight him. <laughs> <laughs> who knows what he's doing at the moment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Bob, have you kept up with any of the uh, the lightweight boxes? Because I, I, I did want to ask you about uh, um, the Ukrainian guy Vasily Lomachenko. Um, yeah, he, he's just he's just phenomenal. <laughs> he yeah. is absolutely phenomenal. Like, amazing. is he is is, is he one of the most advanced boxers you've you've seen? Uh, he's just the guy knows the guy just knows how to box. He knows how to fight, and he's just he knows where to be at the right time. He's just the way he moves around his opponent in close quarters, um, just slipping through in different positions and coming back to punches, is just it's just it's just nine, it's mind boggling to, to see yeah. him, the way he does that. Jeez, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you see? I, I see him being a multiple weight world champion. Yeah, he sort of reminds me of me in my younger days. <laughs> <laughs> we, we all sort of move like that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, mate, and also just finally, I'll ask you about uh, um, the big Australian fight coming up, which is um, Jeff Horn and Terence yeah. Crawford. That's now June nine after a setback with injury. There was a bit of um, controversy surrounding that as well. Yeah. Um, Jeff Horn, how good of a shot is he at beating Terence Crawford? And is Terence Crawford is this a bit of hype surrounding him, or do, you know, because obviously people are calling him one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. Yeah. Um, do you think he's going to struggle with the bigger man in Horn? And do you think Horn's got a chance? Oh, look, Horn has got a chance. Like I told people before, I said, no one gave Horn a chance prior to him fighting Pacquiao, to beating Pacquiao. Mm. And, um, you know, like, he, he he just gave it a rough, hard go at it, and he beat him. And, um, you know, it was a decent fight, and, and he showed. Like, I mean... You know, to, to fight a big fight for the world title like this with the pressure behind it, fighting a, le- a legendary fighter in Pacquiao in front of 50,000 50, people mm. in um, Brisbane, like, he handled the pressure. There was no worries. Um, so I believe he'll, he'll be fine. Uh, whether he can handle Crawford's slickness and fastness and, and combinations and nothing, but, but Horn is a guy that he's a very humble kid and he really works hard. He believes in himself. Mm. And that win he had against Pacquiao will still be in his system to give him the confidence he needs. Um, yep. And, and I, I believe um, that he won't allow the reputation of Crawford to get in the way of his, his, his uh, preparation and performance. I, 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 I believe he can be because Horn's a, Horn's a big, a big, big welterweight, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's all about handling the moment, I guess, isn't it? When you're in a, a situation like that, he's got Anthony Mundine calling him out as well. Um, yeah. Do you think if he if he wins or loses this fight, does he come back and get a, a bit of a payday with Anthony Mundine, or do you keep oh, yeah. keep well, working away overseas? Mundine, I know Mundine will give him a good payday. I know that for sure. Um, you know, yeah. people people are saying. You know, oh, geez, Monday should just forget about it now and just retire. But why, you know? I'm not a person to say, you yeah. know, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you're hustling and you want to do it, why not, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can't deny that Monday is the biggest payday in Australia at the moment. So oh, sure. it's always an option there for Horn. I mean, geez. Like, um, and Bob, just know, to finish up. Yeah. Oh, sorry, continue on, continue on. No, I was just, just going to say, like, I mean, you know, Mundine's offered Horn two million, which which is the payday that he's getting to fight Crawford, you know. So, 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's right. No, I'll just I'll just ask you about something just to finish up, Bob. I wanted to ask you about this. Um, you sparred back in the day with uh, Mike Tyson, and yeah. I just wanted to know that how all that came about and um, what that experience was like, because that would have been something uh, else to to jump in the ring with someone like him. Yeah, like um, it was um, it was all good time because like my trainer at the time, Ancho Hyder, he was doing work with uh, Jeff Finnick. Mm-hmm. And Jeff Fink was given the job to do um, to train Mike for his retirement fight. Um, so they said, "Look," and that was probably uh, I think it was eight weeks out before I was I just organised to fight Rob Callaway for mm-hmm. the WF World Heavyweight Title. Um, ended up being one of the best fights seen in Australia as sure as ever. Um, mm. So uh, me, Hyde, and Fink, we went over to. Um, Phoenix, Arizona, trained with Tyson for six weeks. And um, I went there. You know, I feel, feel I felt I was decently fit at the time. And I went there. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm going to play on the star Mike Tyson. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm just, just, like, I was nervous and excited at the same time. And the first day I met him, you know, Mikey came in and, and just, it was amazing to meet Mike for the first time face to face. And he gave me a cuddle. He says, look, Bob, he says, um, I'm really, and, and um, you know, Jeff's told me a lot about you, and I like you. And <laughs> and and the next day it was going to be our first bar, and he said to me, he said, he said, Bob, he says because I like you, I'm not going to go hard to your head. <laughs> <laughs> and you thought, hard. thank God. <laughs> but he says to the body, I will. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm thinking, shit, yeah, thanks, mate. <laughs> anyway, the next day, like that night, I went to bed, and I'm thinking, far out tomorrow, I'm sparring Mike, you know, tomorrow I'm sparring Tyson. And um, the next day, when we went to the, to the gym at one o'clock to spar him, and um, you know, we warmed up, getting ready, and um, we got in the ring. And Jeff goes, "I want you to do three rounds for Mike." I said, "Yeah, no worries, you know." And I'm thinking, three rounds? That's like that's no problem at all, you know." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. I've got the headgear on and look across the ring and there's Mike, you know, and, and Mike with headgear on, I the only way I can possibly describe it to see Mike face to face like that in a spa is like looking at a great white shark face to face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so daunting, so there was so much intimidation from there. And um the first round went and just as 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 we went touch gloves, my legs went to rubber. <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm, thinking, I'm in big trouble here. I'm in, I'm in huge trouble. I'm thinking, I can't feel my legs. I'm nervous already. <laughs> yeah. And um, after the first round, after the first round, I, honestly, I'll tell you now, after the first round, I was absolutely rooted. I was stuffed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just the nerves. I couldn't breathe in the nerves. I mean, I looked at Jeff. I said, Jeff, Jeff, I said, I said I'm exhausted, mate. And he goes, <laughs> Please, one more round, one more round, just one more round, we'll do two, you know? And I said, okay, you know, it's okay. Yeah. I took a round, I survived, and it was scary, it was honestly scary as anything. And um, yeah, yeah. as soon as the bell went in the second round, I just jumped in the ring straight away. I didn't even look, I just jumped out. Don't wait. <laughs> one, one more round, one more round. <laughs> but, um, but the funny thing was, you know, after, after this, two weeks, I really felt comfortable and good. And um, then we were sparring, we were sparring really good. And actually, um, on the um, a week out, we went to DC, to Washington, mm. where the fight was. And we, me and Mike, had our last spar. It was five days out for the fight. It was, it was we done six rounds, and it was it was it was really hard. It was hard. Yeah, it was the hardest spar I had with Mike ever. Like he was full on. And um, the funny thing was. ESPN News, the the sports channel, they were there to um uh, write up on the on, on spa, yeah. And um, we went for it, like, and I was blown away that that I held my own with Mike, yeah. Um, and um, and the funny thing was, when we got out, like I shook Mike's hand, and, and Mike just looked at me as. You punched like a fucking mule. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> How do you, I think you're telling me that? Said, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's a wonderful compliment from Mike Tyson. Oh, so I mean, like, um, like we had a, we had an awesome time. Like, I mean, even one time we went to um, 
a place called Scottsdale, which is near Phoenix. And when Mike wanted to go over like a relax this one night to go out, and we went out to the nightclub. But we didn't drink. We just we walked around and just, you know, yep. Mike would like to see people dance and stuff, you know. So we went there. Yeah, yeah. And, and this place was really a high class, you know, special nightclub. And, and the lineup was like 50 deep. Yeah. 50 people lined up waiting to get in. And sure enough, the security center is coming and they called us forward. And we're, <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah. There's about like six, seven over eight of us. We're walking forward and <laughs> I'm next to Mike and Jeff. And um, all the crowd turned around again. You hear him whisper going, Look, there's Mike, there's Toys, there's Toys. So I, I just lift my shoulders up. Yeah, that's right, mate. I'm with Toys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buddy, it was, it was, it was a great, mate. It was the most memorable time I ever had. Six weeks was just unbelievable over there. Yeah, sure. What an experience to spar with a legend like Mike Tyson. Uh, How do you think he'd go just against some of the heavyweights now? Pardon? How do you think he'd go against some of the heavyweights now? Oh, uh, look, you know. In, in my day, you know, like, I mean, I'm 52 now, uh, but but in my day, geez, I was bloody, um, yeah, there's a few there I'd like to have had a go with. Yeah, for yep. sure. Yeah, young Joseph Parker. Oh, look, you know, I'll tell you something, like, one thing that the fight that really made me stand out and watch with Joseph Parker was when he fought Carly Meehan, right? Yep. Now, Carly, okay, he was 42 when he fought Joseph, but, but um, Carly was a, still a big, strong man. Mm. And um and the way Joseph Parker just demolished Carly, it just blew me away. I thought, wow, you know, that's no one's done that to Carly ever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and he'll I think he'll bounce back from this loss. I think he'll he'll get a bit uh take a bit more risk and oh. get a bit a bit bit younger and a bit so a bit hungrier again, you know? Yeah. Well the thing is, like I mean, the first guy to take, you know, um uh, Joshua the distance and um you know, he fought well, and, and uh, unfortunately, the referee never gave Parker the, the opportunity to fight the fight he wanted to fight. Yep. You know? Yeah, yeah. A very disappointing refereeing performance he got in the middle of everything there. Oh, I couldn't believe I could not believe that referee was given the, the job to do that fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A strange choice. Bob, we'll leave it there, mate. Thanks very much for chatting with us again. Appreciate no, you pleasure. taking the time out. Um, and, uh, yeah, mate, all the best with the, with the gym on the Central Coast. And uh, we look we look forward to hearing more stories again sometime soon. No, I've got, I've got, I've got thousands, mate. Thousands. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. We'll have to check back in with you sometime. Thanks very much, mate. All right, mate. See ya. See ya. Bye bye.